Hitting the button. You ready? Is there any issues if I use my bait while I'm uh, streaming? Well, it's already streaming. So it's streaming. Tell us. Here we go. <laughs> you tell us. All right. We are streaming. We are live. Let's see. We got the comments out here. All right. All Welcome, right. everybody, to uh, Monday night's episode of Get Some Fire podcast, Get Some Fire live. I'm doing the intro while Brian is sharing because I am uh, currently unable to share because of comments I made on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> my bad. So anyway, we're here tonight with Dog to Love himself, which I think is actually trademark, Corey, so we might get in trouble for that. But he is the owner of Love Shack Boutique in San Antonio, and he's given up San in Angelo. Ooh, San Angelo, my bad. Yeah, so it's it starts with an A, right? Yeah, <laughs> true, true. There is a Love Shack San Boutique Angelo. in San Antonio, Texas, but we're Love Shack Intimate Boutique in San Angelo, Texas. I got it. It's like okay. three and a half hour difference. All right, so. Uh, Tell everybody who you are, because that'd be a lot easier on me now. Okay. So, <laughs> as Sam said, my name is Corey Bayer. Uh, I am the owner and operator of Love Shack Intimate Boutique in San Angelo, Texas. Uh, I've been working in the adult industry for probably 10 years now. Um, before that, I was in the United States Marine Corps, did a combat tour to Afghanistan. Thank um, you for your service, just, my brother. Yeah. No need, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, started selling stuff when I was in eighth grade. Uh, we started up another successful company, and we're growing that for virtual assistants. Um, as for that, that's who I am. Sounds like a busy guy. You get it. Uh, you get everything shared out, Brian. Yeah, we are sharing. We got Nicole on here. What's up, Nicole? Miss oh, Handle yeah. it herself. Can you handle oh, it? Thank you. Let's see. Okay. All right, I think we got all the groups. Really, really, Brian in charge of the sharing. He doesn't. He doesn't talk as much. Yeah, he likes. We that, might want right? to do that. Yeah. So, you ready? All right, let's go. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. All right. Just Where do we even begin with this week, man? I'm I'm a little bit nervous of this conversation. <laughs> um, I, I honestly almost thought to just lie to you guys and say my internet was out or something. Because, like, um, we, we, may, we may cross some taboo lines tonight. I, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with okay, that. Okay, we'll, we'll try and keep it PG rated. Uh, obviously, uh, we got the, the greater public viewing. But um, I think but this it is, is something, Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's we, Day, right? We do have a, a certified love doctor on the show, so yeah. we really should. It's a public service to actually discuss this stuff, as awkward as it feels. And you said this hey, is. Yeah, uh... I do want to say I, I will not. I'm not a, a love doctor. Uh, I can be. Uh, I'll call myself a sex coach, sex educator. Uh, but <laughs> when you say wanna... sex coach, I just see a guy at the side of the bed blowing a whistle. Blowing a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Another lap. <laughs> Another round. <laughs> Ten Again. more. Ten more bell. You got another set Give in you. Three more. <laughs> Give me three more. <laughs> Who is Mark? Where's the fitness ninja? <laughs> I want to say about keeping this on uh, on topic. Yeah, Corey was trying to speak before we just completely Corey, fucking steamrolled him, mate. Corey, the sex ninja. <laughs> hey, fair enough. I don't know, has Mark got that trademarked? Right. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, but this is um, probably the biggest sale day of the year for you. You think? Is this like your your kind of Christmas of uh, your industry? Or is it? Uh, uh, so Valentine's is usually good. Um, industry wise, Valentine's has great sales. However, when Valentine's runs on a Monday, um, a lot of people do tend to celebrate it the weekend prior. Yep. So Friday, spectacular sales, um, over $5,000. Saturday was like 4,500 in sales. Sunday we hit like 2000 and then we're already over 3000 just for today. And we got four and a half hours to go till we close. Oh, wow. What, uh, what's your average sale? What's the average spend that people are uh, spending? Just to get an idea. So average sale wise, um, throughout the years, usually right around like 50 bucks. Okay. However, that is a little bit skewed because um, we do have a lot of customers who will come in religiously to buy male enhancement pills. And so we have okay. like a two for 20. So when we sell $100,000 in a year of an enhancement pill 
for 20 bucks, it, it does lower that. However, we do tend to have a lot of customers who come in and they'll routinely spend anywhere from, again, $20 up to, I've had a couple spend about eight, $900 oh, in wow. a single go. So it does vary. It's pretty common, especially this time. I think we're averaging about 80 bucks right now, but we'll have customers who don't drop a bat an eye and spend three, $400. Oh, so definitely a good time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the goal is yeah. everyone wants to have an awesome relationship, a good um, intimacy with their partners, but we get in a habit of repeating the same thing over and over, especially in long-term relationships. And so you add some toys, add some things to change it up and it could take kind of this boring relationship you're in and it reignite a fire into it and create this whole new like atmosphere. I, uh, you know, it's one of the, one of my messages I talk about in my mornings, I've talked about a couple of times is, uh, never stop dating your spouse, right? Because, uh, when it's new and, and you're dating and you're, you're pulling out all the stops and you're, you know, you're being intentional, right? You're, you're buying them flowers mm -hmm. and you're texting them in the morning and, you know, texting them at lunch and doing all that stuff you do in a new relationship, right? And then you get lazy and you get married and you stop trying and you get fat and you stop, you know, getting your nails done and the girls and they stop, you know, dressing nice and everyone's wearing sweatpants all the time and, it gets boring, right? So it's the same idea, right? Keep it new, keep it fun, keep it interesting, you know, keep it exciting so that it doesn't get boring and you don't get tired of it and you don't, you know, end up divorced and split up. Uh, I, th I think it's a good yeah. message and it's all part of the same kind of message, you know. It's, uh, you know, when it gets boring, you know, you tend to look for something else. So keep it from getting boring. This is true. Uh, another thing um, with Sam being a small business surgeon, um, yeah. we write at dawn. So a lot built on relationships, a lot of times who you are when you first meet your spouse is not the same person 15 years from now. Definitely. Oh, that's like, true. Yeah, it's absolutely true. When, when you start focusing on your work, your career and stuff like that, when you're holding the same expectations to the person that you knew 15 years ago, you're obviously going to, or you might end up disappointed and hurt. So sometimes, as you said, you, you need to redate your spouse, yes. like rediscover who they are. Yes. I mean, I'm not saying quote unquote, go get divorced to your spouse, but be like, Hey, we need to take a short break and start dating each other again, go on dates, start the whole courtship all over again to Refind out who they are today because interests change over 10, 15 years. Yeah, get intentional again, you know. So we talk about everything, whether it's uh, our dating life or our business life, it's everything we got to do with intention, right? We don't just go on cruise control and just, you know, hamster in a wheel. I talk about all the time where you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. You're not getting anywhere. It's boring and you know, you got to jump off that wheel and uh, do something exciting, you know, like I said, let's start dating again. Let, you know, let's literally make a date night. I know a lot of the guys in, uh, in Apex talk about that, of mandatory date night. And uh, I love that idea. You know, it's it's on the calendar. It's non-negotiable. And, you know, Thursday night's date night. There's nothing else that comes in the way, you know. Show, show your spouse that they're important, just as important as work. Um, see, see this behind me. What's that saying? It's a small business surgeon, right? Mm. Yeah, I am. I am not qualified to talk about relationships. Sure, you I can are. tell you how not. I but can you tell you are. How not to do them. That's how. That's why you're qualified. Not. You're the <laughs> qualified the same way I am. I know what hey, I screwed up. Everyone okay. has a qualification, mm -hmm. and you still have a way of maintaining relationships. You still know how to actively <laughs> listen and take care. If in a business, nah, dude, oh. I live by myself, man. I like it. Christine, you're I out of hand. I'm saying, but you do. Fair enough. Oh God! Just Christine's <laughs> out of hand. You can't see the comments, but uh, she says we shouldn't talk oh, about yeah. we shouldn't talk about hamsters while we're. Uh... <laughs> oh, Just says we God. love the lessons. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, shout out to Jess is on here. I got to uh, ride my bike with Jess, literally on the same bike uh, on Saturday. I don't know if you guys saw our little reel we did. That was fun. I was riding my bike on the boardwalk, and there's Jess standing there. Waiting for a ride, so I threw on a bike and we did a reel. I rode it back to uh, the end of the boardwalk where our car was. So that was that was fun. And then Christine's on here harassing us. 
And uh, who else is on here right now? I don't know. How do we get the rest of the comments? Jerry's on here. You guys got any questions? Let's uh, shout them out. <laughs> don't. Or maybe not. not. God, no. Don't encourage uh, Christine. Not maybe question. Yeah, don't encourage Christine. <laughs> put questions off limits. Why isn't Christine on a date? Yeah, wasn't date night Christine? Yeah. Mm. Throw oh, on the back of the I sell battery operated boyfriends if you need one <laughs> or girlfriends. Battery operated girlfriends, that's that's a new one. I don't know if uh... Yeah, we should really interview Corey. Um <laughs> <laughs> did, did you not see the, the video I shared on my Facebook the other day? So uh -uh. um it what I shared uh oh man, what's the name of it? It's a uh, her ultimate pleasure. Uh, it's a uh, toy by Pipe Dream. Oh, so, I did see that. It was so yeah. fucking weird because it was like a plastic vagina it was sitting on. Well, it, it, it's, yeah, it's like a... Like a your, base because it was for yeah. the, the demonstration. It, yeah. It's a tester. So yeah. what it does it is, is it creates a uh, gentle vacuum to draw the <laughs> labia into the cone. And then it has a vibrating licking tongue. So it actually licks the clitoris. Um, so that's really great for solo play. And then another thing that's cool about it is you can flip it over and the handle actually can be used for um, penetration as well. Nicole wants to see the nunchucks. I, this not, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's getting crazy. <laughs> Benny wants to know if it, they talk so, back. It's seldom I'm speechless. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure to do that information. It's the red. <laughs> <laughs> Sam blushes on every one of these shows. <laughs> um, I mean, you're blushing pretty good too. Yeah, I'm just you're matching like right this now. is a <laughs> color. They're this matching is, your shirt. It's getting this questionable. This is a subject. You know, I, you know, I come on. We need some questions from the audience. I wasn't here. raised to talk about this. You know, so no so one quiet was, Unfortunately, you know, no you know. one is raised to talk about sex, and honestly, that's the problem. I mean. Think about where we are in a society. Uh, we have <laughs> so much sex and intimacy portrayed in our music on TV. We had stupid reality TV shows about Teen Mom and all this shit. Yet you get sex education in school and you're basically, at least here in Texas, you're taught, hey, wear a condom. Or you're not even really taught wear a condom. It's called don't have sex till marriage. Well, that clearly didn't work when there's people in my when i was in seventh grade already pregnant so the reality is is we need to have these awkward conversations with friends with kid our children as we raise them to understand that hey we need to one always make sure you're in a safe consensual relationship don't fucking Do be an asshole don't do that and talk about intimacy because you're never going to get better I completely don't agree. I completely agree. However, it's, it's generally those conversations that I have behind closed doors and not on a fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so we got to break some barriers here. We're pushing the envelope I, right I on mean, these. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nicole Just, says sex I, is I, awesome. She 100% like recommends. This... <laughs> <laughs> That's where my discomfort comes from. Like, is I, I don't have a problem talking to a partner about sex. It's like talking to you guys about it. That's like, yeah. Benny wants to know if the battery operated girls talk back. <laughs> <laughs> no. It just says this conversation is uh, hard to have with Biden in the background. I can move it. <laughs> it seems funny. You know, while we're on the subject of sex. I, he actually looks like he's trying to sniff your ear, though. <laughs> that was the point. That was the point. All right, so Corey, so all this world that you're in is completely new to me. I've never uh, had any experience with anything other than, you know, the real thing. <laughs> so where uh, where would the uh, entry-level person, um, you know, new to them, like what's like, um, you know, the newbie person, where would they start? What would they, you know, if they walked into your store and said, hey, I'm interested in something, like, you know, where would you turn them to? Like, no, they're not going to start with something like that. Yeah, you're not going to start with, yeah. Mm -mm. Like sometimes they do. <laughs> so typically, uh, I, I'll put it this way. When I have younger, I don't know, by younger, um, 18 to like 24 year old college girls, military women come in 
and they're exploring for the first time. They're looking for something to experience, um, change things up, masturbate with, have an orgasm. They, they know they need something in their life, but they're not sure what way to go. Um, typically, I recommend them one of our lines called a pillow talk. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. There's no pulsations, basically Morse code of sex toys. So uh, it's just simple. You turn it on, but if you want to increase the intensity, hold the power button and allows you to ramp it up. The reason I recommend this is because they've never used one of those toys. So you're not going to know if you want like low frequency sensations or high frequency. And if you go right off the bat to something super intense, it can affect everything else. Either one, you're not going to like it, or it becomes that's your first style of toy you're introduced to. And so you can't really change it up to anything that's not as intense because you develop this sensation of, oh, hey, this got me there and it worked. So now when you go to something that's not as powerful, you're just kind of like, eh, I'd rather my other one. So is there like a, so like a build up where you kind of get used to it? It's almost like uh, when you have a crazy stereo in your car back in the day and you know you start out with 10 inch speakers and then they were loud in the beginning, but they're not loud anymore. So now you put 12 inch speakers in and you know, now they seem loud and you got to keep going, you know, is that, is that kind of like something or uh, you find I mean, it's very similar. It's, ramp it's up the same to way it? in everything. Everything you build up to. I mean, let t take the gym. Gym is, you know, arguably a completely different concept. But if you start off working with 10 pounds, because you start off with nothing and you're working off with that, and then eventually you're over here benching 225, a 10 pound weight ain't going to do shit for you. I mean, you could go forever and do thousands and thousands of reps and that 10 pounds will work out for you. But you can get the same benefit in 10 minutes, five minutes with 225 pounds. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Jerry's asking what the best seller is. What's your, what's your number one product? So, I mean, not counting um, male enhancement pills. That by far just singular pill is our number one um, seller. We sell the Rhino 24K. Um, I probably sold $89,000 worth of that wow. product last year. What is that? Wow. Uh, our Rhino 24K. It's a uh, herbal male enhancement pill. Um, it's designed to increase stamina. It's no male enhancement pill in the market's gonna make your dick bigger. That's just the reality of it. Dude, if but it did, I'd have a I'd have a dickle barrow. Just be like a wheelbarrow. Just oh, for my yeah. dick. Hey, if you <laughs> listen to uh, what was it? One of Joe Rogan's old uh, freaking stand up comedy around over my shoulder like that. <laughs> oh yeah, if that worked, uh, one of his old stand up comedies was like hey, it's called Big Dick Big Dick Pills, and it was uh, if that did exist one ron jeremy and a coke whore at two in the morning is not going to promote it on the uh tv and then two people would be overdosed from it within 30 minutes <laughs> like dead in the car dick <laughs> we fucking launched out there and suddenly... just exploded out the window <laughs> yeah oh man if you watch a good thing not... yeah <laughs> yeah if, if you have not listened to joe rogan's big dick pills I highly, highly recommend doing that. It is probably one of the greatest things I have ever listened to. All right. Christine's asking, um, you recommend any lotions or anything like that that make it better? Wait. Oh, so we're off dick pills now then. Well, actually, no. Uh, best okay. seller we said was pills. What's the, what's the next best seller besides pills? Uh, let me pull it up. So category-wise, I mean... We do sell a lot of different um, vibrators, such as our Vidu and um, Evolve. They are really great items. Let me sort this out for our store real quick and see what our absolute best sellers are. 
set on some KPIs right now, live, <laughs> and get some fun. Yeah. So, I mean, we do have a lot of just individual things. So, when I get down to... Um, so, again, top selling ones at the end of the day still are going to be <laughs> male enhancement pills. We outsell those like 10, 20 to 1 of almost everything else. Um, we have done who, pretty who buys, good. What's, what target demographic buys those? They fascinate me. Everyone who's 18 and older. So basically, I describe it as like this to our, our customers. Um, <laughs> like, you all think you're amazing. You all think you're awesome. But at the end of the day, you may have been the best person on your high school football team, but you're not in the pros. Take one of these teams, it's like going to advance to the pros. Um, they'll make it like you could punch a hole through a cinder block. Like, uh, look, like one of my friends, right? Like somebody I know personally had to have the old needles in the deck to syringe it out after he took a Viagra. And I just, I just can't do it. Like, <laughs> how come so many people can trust that part of their body to a magic pill? <laughs> Oh, that's that's why my numbers are all skewed. I'm looking at last year. Sorry. They want to know, uh, Sam. Uh, Wiley and Benny want to know what's in the uh, pill bottle in your background. That's uh, a bunch of whatever they want it to be. They want to know if, you, um, they they, know if your dick pills are in there. <laughs> no, it used to, it pills. used to say uh, with a pH. It used to say fuck it all, um, but I took it off because I didn't think it looked terribly professional. Even though it was really funny, because uh, yeah, but it did say fuck it all. Yeah. Nicole says those pills are pretty awesome. <laughs> Oh, they really are. I mean, so statistically, let's face it, a lot of men tend to be one and done. So you get your orgasm and you start going down and you're done. And that tends to lead your partner to being um, sexually disappointed. Um, you got yours and she's over here like, awesome. So glad that worked out for you. Now, I guess I'm just going to roll over and go to sleep. Ideally, I'd recommend using a toy, um, but the pills, they, they just help you out. So instead of being one and done, you're going to stay um, excited and be able to continue. Uh, I have yet to have a customer who comes through and been like, hey, I accidentally took too much, had to go to the ER. They stuck a needle in my dick and sucked all the blood out. I haven't had that. Has it happened? Maybe. But if it has, I am not aware of it. It may have had something to do with the cocaine he was taking. <laughs> yeah, it could have been that too, yeah. <laughs> that that could be. I mean, mixing illegal <laughs> drugs and pharmaceuticals. It could also be they didn't take it as the way they should have. I mean, let's face it. You're doing cocaine. You already probably have coke dick. So you're probably popping Viagra left and right, hoping that it goes away. So you probably took whether he admits it or not, probably took way more than the recommended dosage. That would do it. You see, I tried and Viagra and I just got taller. Hey, it works. Knock on wood. Yeah. So, but yeah, we actually so had this top selling item. I, I know yeah. I'd mentioned the pill. For example, I sold 4,530 of that one pill. Um, it's a lot of good times right Do they come yeah. in a one, is it a one pill in a packet or is it like a bottle of pills? So we have it in Are you ones. selling these in single pills? Do we sell them in single pills? So the, we sell them for 1281. So the 4,530 ended up being like 58,000 gross. And then we sell them in a six count, um, bottle as well. We sold over 21,000 worth of that item. I just can't understand how men can like stop having sex before a woman has come. That just blows Yeah, we my had mind. this conversation in one of the groups. Like, like I, like I don't know. I feel like I'm a disappointment if you don't, you know, right? So like, I didn't. You, you are Brian. <laughs> yeah. So like that's why you know you kind of you know you got to make it work. Well, you got to think. Not all men care. I mean that that is unfortunately the reality. I mean we would not have the statistics that exist that 40 60 percent of women do not have an orgasm from penetration like that that is 
statistical like surveyed fact that a lot of women do not climax from penetration so if you're over here you're all excited and you are wham bam thank you ma'am you finish and you know again statistical average two to five minutes what about her I agree. so i mean it's just one of those things that i mean when yeah. you account for billions of people in the world it's um, let's face I it why you sometimes do what you are do selfish now. i see why you do what you do it's like you know there's a better way and you feel sorry for all these guys and you want to be like guys let me help you let me teach you some yeah. toys and shit that's true right I, oh, honestly, I, I don't feel sorry for the guys because the guys always do worse. <laughs> I, I feel sorry That's for true. the women. Yeah, I feel sorry like, for the women. Yeah. I know the vast majority, we'd probably say 99.9% .9 of all men are going to get their orgasm during sex. However, it's not the same for women. And it, it, it sucks. And after being in the adult industry for so long, I will 100% assess women have way better toys than guys do. Like their toy, mm. I don't know. <laughs> Crazy as it sounds, but if I could have a vagina for a day, fucking all them toys, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> they got so much shit that does like that I could never imagine doing. I, I can't go 200 strokes a minute or vibrate at 10,000 RPMs. Well, not with that energy, you can't. <laughs> That's not, that doesn't represent you know winning. What? It, it, if I could go 200 strokes a minute. It would just be for a minute, and then I'd probably have a heart attack. <laughs> so, you got that sozo thing? The sozo with the thing mounted on it? You ever seen that? Um, that so seems crazy. I don't carry it. Um, uh, a company called Drildo produced it, and they uh, <laughs> created a, a tapped adapters for actual drills. So you could create a, a rotational effect, and then they also have the sozo attachment. Um, you can sometimes find that one made by aftermarket uh, companies on like Amazon or look online for it. And you can usually find it for 60 to 100 bucks because they're custom made. Benny's looking so for one for a to... He just commented, where do I find one? <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry wants to break up the phone and wants to talk about your VA business. Jerry, that's no fun. Hello. You do have a uh, big VA business, which uh, we probably should mention in this process. But um... so my my virtual assistants are not sex assistants. Just <laughs> just to completely clarify that, um, we do separate the businesses. Um, the virtual assistants is going well. Um, we're building out a website. I partnered with uh, Adam Miller. He's helping to the back end side of it. Um, over the last almost a year i've kind of dialed in the recruiting process uh we're working on a done for you team so i have about five or six sales agents that are trained up in a quality assurance um, lead and script writer so once we kind of figure out the pricing we'll be able to start reaching out to real estate people or just people in general who have sales accounts or stuff like that and offer them a dedicated like phone service calls their own virtual in-house call center so that's going yeah, pretty no, good it's really something uh it's, i actually uh picked up a va before i met you and um she may be watching jenny and she's down in the philippines and she's actually been a great help because she does all my flyers for me she makes a lot of you know phone calls for me you know for making appointments you know in the real estate world, I think the worst part of the real estate world is when someone wants to see, you know, six properties, you got to call each property and is it available? Okay, what time can I see it? Oh, no, I can't see it at two. Can you see it at three? Oh, let me call them. Oh, no, we can see it at four. And it goes back and forth for like three hours of when you can set up appointments to try and stack them in a row to go show a couple houses. So uh, I'm able to mm. say, Jenny, can you see if you can set up these six houses? And she'll tell me, all right, two are in contract already. These three are available. And I got it set up at uh, five, six, and seven, you know, and it saves me awesome. a ton of time um and um you know centering data and stuff like that you know filling out paperwork you know basically anything we can do remotely um it works out well um she actually saves all these videos that we do on the monday night show and then every morning i do the, the live video um on the we ride at dawn and she saves all them off of facebook and puts them up on my youtube so my youtube channel has every one of these videos all stacked in there and she also reproduces, she takes my post, if I put something on Facebook, whatever, she puts on Instagram and LinkedIn and does that stuff for me so that I'm not sitting there 
copying and pasting posts from platform to platform. Um, and I'm always looking for more stuff for her to do, but um, it's definitely been a, a, a freeing thing for me because, like, you know, I spend a lot of time making flyers and posting on, you know, social media and, you know, <clears throat> you know, usually if it's a, it's a post that I'm putting up that's heartfelt, obviously that's from me, but if it's a post about open house this weekend, there's no reason for me to make that flyer and post that. And I say, Jenny, we're doing open house Saturday, 12 to 2. She makes the flyer and posts it for me. And um, it works out well. I mean, she got better grammar than you, so I can tell you all apart. What's that? <laughs> she has better grammar than you, so I can tell you yeah, all apart. Yeah, like, she does. And I've really got one, one too. Yeah, I actually helped uh, Sam get What's his uh, virtual assistant. But that's one of the benefits of using them. Is I mean, unfortunately, we're in a world where, um, depending on where you live, people are starting to want fifteen to twenty dollars an hour, and not everyone can afford that right off the bat. Um, What's your average so, uh, VA go for? I mean, what do you charge, or they charge, or overall? So, depending on what country you're at, you can typically find reasonable VAs from two to four dollars an hour. Wow. Um, and they're going to be okay. Uh, we do try to advocate to getting our virtual assistants paid a thousand dollars a month. Uh, my wife, she is from the Philippines. Um, I've been there. I've stayed in the Philippines for several months at a time. So I understand what like the economic um, position most people are in. And unfortunately, it is it's a poor country. I mean, you literally have registered nurses with master's degrees making five, $600 a month living from loans from friends. Uh, my wife, she worked for the city government. Their paychecks were never on time. They were always delayed. Mm. Um, it, it's a, it, it's an unfortunate reality that still a lot of people struggle just to make basic necessities and ways of life. So we advocate a thousand dollars a month because one, I don't want to feel that I'm taking advantage of anyone. And then it provides them economic security, just like everyone here in the U S or pretty much any job ever, you want to make more money and you're always going to keep either a door cracked or open looking for that opportunity. So if you sell real estate, if someone came up to you and offered you 8% closing and you didn't, or commission, you didn't have to change anything, but just switch companies, you might switch over. Or, I mean, not necessarily real estate, but I mean, take a waitress. You're making 213 an hour plus yeah. tips. But if I offer you minimum wage plus tips, odds are I'm going to get the best of the best wait staff. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, paying a little bit more for a virtual assistant, you tend to get a little better quality English. Uh, you can expect a little bit more in ability to perform. Um, and then they're also going to tend to be a little more loyal because you are paying them a wage that's truly taking care of them. So unless you end up just having like a clash between your like, original job description and changes or core values most of the time they're going to stick with you as long as you need them to and they'll do what they can to help you out the best and as long as you have the ability to and you've gained trust you have the option to pivot with them and train them to do more and more tasks i mean there's lots of people who have virtual assistants here in the apex community who have them doing all their tasks that they need but they still have free time to take on other clients so instead they advocate it it's like hey i'll let you use my virtual assistant for 20 hours a week and then you outsource them to uh, other businesses for 20 hours a week at 15 20 bucks an hour because they're already trained all they got to do is pay you as the uh like setup person. And so now you capitalize on your virtual assistant, you can give her bonuses and you keep more productivity for them. So they're not having to worry about looking for other work or stuff too. And as you build that team, you are able to just more and more effectively use them better. 
Yeah, I see that. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, leveraging like we do, right? So it's uh, we got work we got to get done, and we get someone to do it, and we get a markup on your labor, and uh, it's the same idea. It's uh, it's really been a game changer. Um, you know, it's in my world. I freed up a lot of. I spent a lot of time on you know, like I said, minimal, menial tasks. You know, making flyers and stuff like that. You know, we all can do it. We all jump on Canva. We all can make flyers. But at the end of the day, if you waste an hour or two a day making flyers and posting them on social media, that's an hour or two a day. I can be calling leads or showing properties or closing deals or whatever. So, or even just quality time. I mean, it's just as important as uh, as we all know, time with the kids and time to relax and. You can't work 80 hours a week because you'll burn yourself out. So it gives you the opportunity to take 10, 20 hours off of your uh, plate each week um, for minimal minimal payment. Uh, it's definitely worth it. I, I, I highly recommend Absolutely. virtual assistants to everybody. You know, a lot of people are afraid because they're out of town. I mean, the girl I got is completely loyal. I mean, she's great. Um, literally, she's a Facebook friend of mine now, and like we comment on each other's posts, and it's just it's cool. You know, it's it's uh, you know. It's kind of fun, so um, absolutely, I definitely recommend. Now, that. Uh, everyone's afraid of it, and I think in, in the beginning because they don't understand what a virtual assistant is. Like, is it a real person? Yeah, it's a real person in another country, and basically, we're just taking a I want to say taking advantage of, but leveraging that the uh, the rate is lower there, and you know, it's you know the other problem that we got here in, in the United States is that uh, people don't want to work. Just about every person I know yeah. is looking to hire, and there's no one to hire. I mean, literally, like everyone I know is looking for some sort of labor. And, you know, either they can't get it or who they get is horrible and doesn't show up and is on drugs and misses days of work and all this other stuff. And um, uh, so I actually had a conversation with uh, one of the, an Apex members about this because historically, when with my store, we'd always kind of started a little lower wage just because, I mean, no one ever seemed to be interested working there. And he suggested that, you know what, try increasing your wage um, quite a lot. And so we started looking at that. And so I give my employees the abilities to, um, as they complete the sexual, uh, sexual health and pleasure education courses and start getting certifications, um, I mean, I start allowing them to get up to, you know, $13, $14 an hour. Um, I give them daily sales bonuses if they meet certain, if they hit goal for the store, they have the ability to make an extra 50 bucks a day. So which, I like that model. You That's, break that out. Yeah, it's almost making them an owner, basically. It's like, you know, you put in the effort and we make extra money today, you get the share in that. And I really think that's a yeah. great thing, you know. And then along with us fully changing up our store. So a lot of people tend to have, um, I guess the perception of a sex shop, a porn store, of this like dark, dungeony, grungy, nasty, just perverted filled store that you would never want to go to. Um, we've really started, we've completely transformed our store from basically that description with the old owner to when you walk into our store, you feel like you might as well have entered a Victoria's Secret that just happens to sell sex toys. Um, when you go through the entrance, you're greeted with, I think we have five very well-dressed mannequins ranging from super skinny to, I'm very proud, she costs a lot of money, but we got a uh, size 22 mannequin. So she's about a, a 3X, 4X. Um, and we get so many customers who comment on us actually having a legitimate plus size mannequin because unfortunately so many different lingerie companies and apparel companies just like to pretend they never existed. They want to stock it, they want to carry it. So we get a lot of positive feedback from there. And because we've made these pivots in how our store is both visually represented online space, how we interact with our customers, the education course, we're starting to get a lot more higher quality applicants who want to apply and work for us. Like mm -hmm. we're, we don't even advertise anymore, or we don't have advertise and we'll probably get 10 or 20 applicants at least a month. Sometimes we get that many in a week. That's because you know, I think that the misnomer is that nobody wants to work. I, I think that 
the reality of it is, is that everybody that is worth the fuck is already working. Mm. They may not have a job. Um, I know a lot of people now, uh, post COVID that don't have jobs anymore. They just bounce from project to project, to project, to project. Right. Uber and Lyft um, is big. I know there's a ton of entrepreneur people that are yeah, in business for themselves people, driving. You know, that's, a, that's that, an entrepreneur there. Um, there's some uh, Airbnb stuff. Airbnb. People, yeah, people online. more of. And, and Amazon stores and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, you told them they were unessential, sent them to the house and said, go, you know, fuck off and figure it out. And so, you know, most people did. And I think I the, the, the landscape has changed. Like, you know, you can't expect, like, that old eight to five corporate shit is, is waning, like, immensely. The amount of change that hit corporate America when all the offices shut down. Just incredible. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you can't expect people who, for the last year and a half, fully function doing their job role at home mm-hmm. and they actually saw productivity increases in corporations to be like, hey, HR said we have to start coming back to the office now. Like, why the fuck do I need to come to the office? I just proved, like, we literally had a government-mandated proving cycle for a year, year and a half that showed I could work from home just fine and all of us have a way healthier, like, overall aspect of life than being at an office under your like tyranny rule i mean it we we spend a good portion of you know we spend we spend a decent portion of time at the office but a lot of a lot of flex time a lot of work from home um you know as long as my guys are honest i and and as long as the work is being done we we don't really hold them uh, you know super accountable to come into the office every day um you know, we can see when they're logged in and the server updating stuff and see if they're online or not. So even though we still have an office, I still like them to come in. Um, yeah, the, the case for working 100% remote was made completely this last two years. And then when people got sent home and there, there was no work, they had to figure it out. And they figured out a way to make a little bit more money with a lot more downtime than they were making before. And, yeah. and that, the amount of people with side hustles has just gone through the roof. I mean, I see people just, you know, literally taking short term contracts, doing pace rate work for people, um, yeah. you know, projects. I'm, I'm just, it's not a job, it's a project. And they fully expect it to last anywhere from two to three months and then bounce to the next project. You know, it's not that they don't like, it's not they don't want to work, it's they figured out a way to work a little bit less and make a little bit more money for their time. I mean, I, you know, COVID yeah. for me was, and uh, then they're also appreciated more. You got to mm-hmm. think if you hire on, if you hired Jim to come in and build you a website or do whatever you need him for, he does a spectacular job. You're going to dude, you're fucking awesome. Thank you. I appreciate everything you do. Here's your mm-hmm. salary we agreed on. Um, let me have your information. If I need you again, I reach out. I'll share you to my colleagues. Like you're going to take someone who, was i mean i'm not saying it's for everyone but probably treated poorly at their job in corporate mm-hmm. america to yeah. now you they are their own boss everybody's everybody's a contractor yeah. like so many more people <laughs> are, are joining movements like ours like apex and um, you know making a way out of their jobs but i think it goes down even as far as the wait staff and this, this stuff that we consider menial um yeah, even as far down as that, we shut them down and told them, go figure it out. And they figured out a way to make more than $2 an hour plus tips. Yeah. And fair play to them. Because yeah. if I can make more than $2 an hour plus tips, there's no fucking way I'm waiting a table. Yeah. None whatsoever. Yeah. If I have the ability, I'm not going to ever go wait a table. So until people lack the ability to make more money than that, no one will ever wait tables again. No, sure. I said the quality of life is big. And, he says, put you know, the plates on the Roombas. They could just float around the restaurant until right they bumped into your table. Yeah. Right, but all of us, I I've mean, actually seen all... I, they have some restaurants that are actually starting to integrate robot deliveries that way. Um, hmm. They literally just put them on a table and the robot goes and takes your food. You pull it off the robot server and it drives its wolf back. I like that. So, yeah. Do, I mean, do you have to tip the robots or can you keep <laughs> your money? 
<laughs> I assume you don't have to tip the robot. There you go. I was. Back I think on. they have like one general person that just runs around to do like refills and just general, you know, customer service checks on people. But I mean, it's not like you're dependent on having to tip people. Me personally, I'd much rather get away from the whole two thirteen an hour in the uh, restaurant industry plus tips. Yeah, and yeah. just pay them a real salary. I think when when I've gone to the Philippines, you pay for your food, they spray it on you. That's it. You're not. Yep. They look at you weird if you leave a tip. It's the um, same in I have same it. in England. The very same. They, like you'll struggle to get them to take a tip. Hmm. Yeah. Now, if it's a really big party, if there's you know, and we don't need to hear about your girlfriends. What? <laughs> So if it's a really big party, they'll take a tip. <laughs> Were you making a tip joke? or the fact that Yeah, the she wouldn't take or? the tip. You get it? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a reach. It was a reach. I went deep. Yeah, not deep enough. Not deep enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you no. Know, Brian, you know, I call you a cunt, mate, but you, you lack depth, you lack warmth, and you've no ability to give pleasure whatsoever. So, sorry, you don't even qualify. <laughs> All right, can we stop now? Just a tip, just a tip. I knew Nicole would jump on that Terrible. one. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so quality of life, though. I mean, I, myself, I was burned out. I was sitting in the office behind a computer doing AutoCAD drawings from 7 in the morning to 5 at night, like, hating life. Like, literally, I talked about it. So it's got Why didn't you trouble. just hire an AutoCAD guy? It's family business, like, and I was good yeah. at it. And we're, in our industry, in, in the HVAC world, the guy that draws the ductwork is the guy that draws the fabrication drawings, which is the guy that makes everything fit in the ceiling and not hit the lights and not hit the pipes. Mm -hmm. And if I screw a job up, the job's in a hole. So I'm probably sounds the like most you need to, important sounds person. Like you need to systematize that and delegate it. it sounds no, like because it's work. it's really it's it's a, it's an engineering side of it, but it's also almost an, an artist side of it as far as you got to lay everything out and make everything fit and. We're dealing with renovation spaces in Manhattan where there's like I mean literally an inch makes a difference, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um they so put on the, that note. yeah they put the ceiling tiles up. Sometimes we gotta hang the ceiling down, put the tiles in, and put the ceiling back up in order to make everything fit because they have to have their ten foot ceilings in this you know space that's got eleven foot beams and we gotta get twelve inch duck under it, and um, it's a problem. So if I Do you understand any of this, Corey? Yes. So if the if the <laughs> if the design I make doesn't work and basically all the duct we fabricated goes in the garbage because it doesn't fit and we need to make new duct work or we put all the duct in and then they can't put the ceilings in because all the lights are hitting the duct work it's the job goes in a hole huge so it's probably mm. the most important i mean it's literally the job well the first part's getting the right price for the job making sure you took it for an amount that you're gonna make money on the second part is everything i do is the complete design of the job all the other trades rely on me if i put a duct at one level, and they run a condo at the other level, and a sprinkler man at the other level, and then my stuff's in the wrong place, then... Who's, you know. who's doing that work now, then? Well, we have guys that work for us that uh, do it, so kind of... We've, we got a team of us that oh, do oh, it. So, so, so I so backed you, away you from can, it, you know, as, as we brought mm -hmm. guys up through the process. But, yeah, you uh, can actually train people. Then and no, you can, but it's... You know the game. Yeah. To, to find someone that's got that much talent and that much... That cares that much, honestly, because... And, and is that humble... Yeah, you don't know that they screwed up until it's too late. That's the problem. You don't know that you. everything doesn't fit until they go to put the ceilings in and they go, you know this duck work you put in this job? Yeah, it's all wrong. Take it out. All right, just throw that whole job in the, in the garbage. So, But like I said, we've had new people come up that we've trained. You know, best people that we brought in were people that actually were installers and know mm -hmm. how to put it in and then... They uh, right. They can draw they've and design been through it. that. They've been through that pain of suffering. Yeah, from when a fucking artist telling him that a, a exactly. twelve inch duct is going to fit through a nine inch hole. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's where Corey comes in with his industrial lube. Yep. Yep. Hey, yeah. Hey, I highly recommend giving. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh god, I got Mariana in here giving us a hard time too. <laughs> I can't see the chat. That's funny. I can't see it. I don't know who's saying what. Uh, Oh, I see. Yeah. Nicole said that's All what right. she said. So, <laughs> Corey, you got a website so, that uh, you sell online, or um, where everyone can find yeah, you? Yeah, we're we're working on uh, we're working on redesigning our website, but it's loveshackexpress.com. dot com. Express dot com. Okay. Yes, sir. It, it drop ships from my distributor, 
So there's over 2,000 items on our website. Or sorry, there's over 20,000 items on our website. All drop ships from my vendors. We have them in California, New Jersey, and Florida. Um, so you can pretty much get whatever you want, usually within a couple days. Um, great program. Um, we are eventually going to revamp the website. Um, I want to start adding some educational trainings and stuff that you'll be able to rent um, to get um, more access to sex education from people who actually know what they're talking about. Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't even know what they want. They don't even know that product exists or whatever they need to make it happen. All right? So you, no. training's part, yeah. a big part of it. In order to, in order to sell it, you got to figure out what the purpose is and how to use it, right? So... Absolutely. And I, I've been in the industry for, you know, 10 years and there's still times when new products come out or something else comes out that I've never had a need for in my personal life, but I ask the right questions so that I do learn about it so that if you do need that product, I can actually properly educate you on it. Well, customer service, right? Customer has needs and you got to figure out the best way to fulfill their needs. And, you know, it's just like any business and the better you are at taking care of your customers and filling their needs and giving them what they need, then uh, the more successful you are. Really, It's no different than any other business, you know, customer service, people come in, they feel comfortable in the store, which I do agree that if you think of a, a you know, an adult store, you kind of think of this like, you know, dark, shady kind of, you know, sticky floor kind sticky of place. Sticky carpet. Yeah, sticky carpet place, yeah. you know, and, and yeah, obviously it gives you a, a bad image where I think a person that's not that, you know, maybe into that would be afraid to go in. But if it's more of a welcoming place, like a Victoria's Secret kind of, you know, classier place, then obviously you might get a little bit more mainstream people to come in there and, you know, first time people, right? And then when you can educate them and say, all right, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your needs? What are you feeling? And then you can say, we can try this and that and the other thing. And it's just like any other business. Now, I, I applaud the model you're taking because I think it really is uh, hitting the target. Because, I mean, like I said, you think I'm in New York City, and so you go through New York City, and there's, you know, all kinds of stores, and a lot of them are pretty pretty funky, you know. If you walk them by, and you're like, you know, well, it looks like a scary place to go into, you know. And uh, I think that whole idea of making it, you know, making it a clean, nice place is, uh, is, is a great, great idea, and that's obviously why you're doing so well. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate that. So, Nicole, she asked the question, do I know a lube as good as astroglide but not so sticky um so that's kind of to best answer that question i do need to ask some questions on that so with lubricants not all lubes are made the same um you have compatibility issues so um, lubes for toys you want to stay away from silicone um Silicone lubricants tend to adversely um, react with non-silicone fillers. So you can take a silicone lubricant, put an old school like jelly dildo in it and put it on a flat table and you'll literally be able to watch that dildo melt. So it'll end up turning flat um, for skin to skin. Me personally, I absolutely love uh, silicone lubricant. Um, it does not get sticky. It does not dry up. Um, it glides absolutely amazing. Like for skin to skin, I don't recommend anything else. Like it, it's life changing. Um, it's pH neutral. So it's not going to affect a woman's natural pH balance at all. Uh, it's safe for anal, uh, vaginal, glides well for oral. Um, a silicone lubricant's gonna be good. Uh, in regards to with Astroglide, if you are using it with toys, um, I shared to Nicole um, a System Joe hybrid lubricant. So a hybrid mixes water base and a little bit of silicone. So it lasts a little bit longer without getting as sticky or tacky, so to speak. Um, the hybrids are going to be safe with every toy on the market. So you don't have to worry about having a compatibility issue. And it's going to be a great overall uh, 
The benefit of going with System Joe is they are actually a medical device company. So they are uh, FDA approved. Um, they have all their FDA certifications. There are several on the market, but it is one of the few to how you can tell the difference between an FDA approved lube and just a personal moisturizer is in when the read the descriptions, these will actually say for use with vaginal or penile use. Whereas a lot of other lubrications will say apply where needed, use um, when extra lubrications required or where is desired. Are they safe products still? Absolutely. But System Joe has actually gone through the process of getting FDA certified, meaning all their tests have shown that their base formula is safe for um, internal use. Uh, great company. It originally started off um, as gynecologists actually looking for a well-sourced uh, lubricating jelly for gynecological visits. So great company again. Um, a lot of their products tend to be uh, pH balanced or so that they're going to range in between about a 4.2 and I think a 4.7, which tends to be where the body's natural um, pH balance is. So they're not going to throw off your body's um, pH system. So System Joe, as Nicole asked, System Joe's a great brand. Um, Wicked is a great brand. Sensuva lubricants are also a great brand. Um, they're all stuff that we carry in our store, and they're all products that I use in my daily life. Uh, another cool thing uh, System Joe has is, I don't know if either of y'all are into having more kids, but they have a product no. called Actively Try. <laughs> no more. I well, have six already. Fair enough. <laughs> but we do have a lot of listeners or people who may be interested in having kids. So um, they have a product called Actively Try. And so when you look at intimacy, uh, the w woman's vagina is acidic in nature. Uh, reason it is, is it's to help keep it clean. Um, it's also the acidity kills sperm. So sometimes people struggle. Uh, with the ability to have children uh, because the pHs are too different. So women tend to be almost like a negative or an acidic, whereas males tend to be closer to neutral. So what happens is if it's too off, then the vaginal secretions will kill all the sperm before it ever even happens a chance. So what System Joe created is a product called Actively Trying. And it's actually a um, higher uh, basic in pH level. So it's designed to be used really only during ovulation period to kind of help slowly change up the pH stats and make it easier to conceive. No, it Sorry, sense. super long-winded there. I apologize. No, it makes sense. Definitely. Uh, it, my yeah. thought was always like all these products or whatever obviously you know if you're getting into it and you're you know ingesting some of it it's silicone based is this like you know toxic type stuff you know uh, in the process no know? not at all especially with the going to system joe anything that's fda approved for body use is body safe now yeah, so. would i recommend drinking a bottle of silicone <laughs> no, lubricant no. absolutely not it probably i don't i'm gonna assume you're gonna get bad chips i don't know <laughs> probably but, <laughs> it, it's not something that I would recommend even, or I wouldn't even consider trying it. But if money was on the table and I could make some money doing it, I mean, <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll drink it. But um, it, it, it is what it is. But they're all designed to be safe with the body, so nothing in them should hurt you. Now, with that being said, you would poop so fast, you would completely <laughs> wreck yourself. Just, no, uh, it even, might be like one. Act. It might no. be like one of those ghost shit. So it just happens. It shoots down the straight. <laughs> it would go just right through you. Shoot like down a the fire track. hose. Straight through you. White, nothing oh. there. Just Why freaking drink instant. lube. Oh, oh God. Christ. 
No. So, Sam, how do you I said get off single. this show? <laughs> how do I get off this fucking show? I said, I said nothing ever. <laughs> I don't fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, what's Jeez. some information you would like to know from from a single guy's perspective? Who is? What? Is there any questions? I mean, you call me Doctor Love, so I mean, <laughs> no, I, I, I have no. Out? I have no questions. I'm I'm really, really quite content right where the fuck I'm at. Um, yeah, I don't really have any questions. I'm fairly well aware of how everything works now. Um, wasn't always the case. Um, but that might be a story for another day. I don't think we need to go into that on this podcast. Um, <laughs> what about you, Brian? Yeah. Do, you have any, do you have any questions for, for Corey? Because we're about up on time. Yeah, we're up on time. Yeah, no, I mean... Um... You know, like I said, I've uh, I've never had the need to get assistance to make it happen for uh, my friends, but um, you know, I guess it's a whole new world that you can make it even better, right? And I get a lot of it. I think is a mental connection too. I, you know, for me, like you know, like you get your head's got to be in it for it to happen for I think for both people, and uh, and that's all about just the romance side of it on a Valentine's Day, right? All the lovers mm. in us, you know, it's you know, wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I don't think it's good for anybody, so. Um, you know, we talked about that. We said that chat we had where it's like, you know what, you're in this to make each other feel good. If one person's being selfish and not putting any effort in making it happen for the other person, then, uh, obviously, you know, it's not the right relationship. So, uh, and me and Sam have actually had conversations about this. How you, yeah. you feel like, you know, it's our job to do that. And if we're not doing our job right, you know, we represent what winning looks like at all times, right? So <laughs> if... Uh, I mean, there's, there's, just a, there's just a lot of stuff I don't really want to talk about on camera, you know. <laughs> True. Well, I will say one thing, and I guess uh, it, it's directed to both men and women, women specifically. Um, always communicate. Yes. Don't fake an orgasm. I mean, if you're not enjoying it, it's one night stand, you want to just get out of it, do what you got to do. But if you actually care about this person and you're wanting to build a good relationship, don't fake. Because all that's going to do is encourage bad behavior. I mean, think, treat your partner as a, for rudimentary as a fucking dog. If your dog shits on your floor and you give him a treat, what's he going to do? Whack it with a new shit again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and I've heard it from a lot of women and they don't want to, they fake an orgasm because they don't want to hurt his ego. They, they don't want to make him feel like he didn't do his job. Well, I'm sorry. He didn't do his job. Um, tell him, communicate, but sit That's why there and be like, Hey, faking, Brian, they don't want you to feel bad. What's that? That's what it is. Yeah. No, they don't your fake. girlfriend doesn't want you to feel bad. That's yeah, no. what it is. That's what causes it. They don't fake. <laughs> Maybe maybe they just hey, maybe statistics? they just tell us maybe they just tell us we're really good and they're all faking, Brian. Do you ever think maybe. About that? I don't think I mean, so. Maybe. Statistics. I mean, statistically, I mean, seventy percent of women aren't having orgasms. So odds are, one out of the three of us is full of shit saying they Come do. Come on, well. Brian. So, I, I but can't manage overall, can't or just manage. on penetration? Because if you're just relying on penetration, then you know. I can't manage thirty percent all by myself, Brian. You're gonna have to figure it out, mate. You're gonna have to get some learning. Jeez. All right, can I go now? You want to read the Zillow reviews, right? Jesus. <laughs> but uh, oh god. So anyway, so Nicole says winners uh, F because that's uh, Ryan Stuman's uh, line. <laughs> no, this is true. And we had Stacy I mean, on uh, not too long ago it. that said the more uh, the more she does it, the better she does a business. But I think that's actually probably just a confidence thing in general. You know, like when your relationships are good and you're, you know, everything's going good in your life, you know, in the home life, obviously your business life is better too. Um, you know, it's all kind of all goes together. If you're having problems in your marriage or your relationship or whatever you have, and then your head's not in the game for your business. So if uh, I think that's all hand in hand. But we're actually going to Stacy's event on Thursday, going down to Tampa. Anyone else going? No? You are, pal. I'm not. No, sir. i got to work. It's I would gonna, love to go. It's going to be like 78, 80 for five days in a row. And I'm going to come back. Well, yeah, it will be. It 10. was 70. I think it was 76 or 78 here today. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it was 17 when I woke up here this morning with a wind chill of two degrees. But it was 58 it's, on Saturday. 
It, it snowed on fucking Saturday. Anyway, all right. Yeah, I have to good go. stuff. Yes. Tell Corey, tell Corey thank you and invite everybody back for next week. How about that? Yeah, yeah man. absolutely. Hey, uh, do you know if Christine's still on? Uh, Can you I'm tell down, she's yeah. on here? She hasn't come out there in a while. Yeah, she, she had sent a message that she was looking for lotions, and I was going to address that. Um, but I'll just message her and tell her to send me a PM yeah, and I can yeah, help her out. Yeah, we had, we had a good crowd tonight. I put the uh, website in the uh, comments, loveshackexpress.com. If you, uh, where else can we find you, Corey? Um, you're on Instagram and uh, obviously here on Facebook. Yeah, we're on Facebook. We have an Instagram. I technically have a Twitter, but I don't really use it. Uh, Does anyone use Twitter? Uh, I, don't know. I don't use it. I don't. Like, I mean, Donald Trump it. did till he got kicked off. Yeah, he it. used it. I don't know. I just never got a hold of Twitter, but that's another point. But um, all right, good probably stuff. Because that you say 140 characters and then they cut you off. Yeah, that's probably why. I'm gone in the first two seconds. So. It's all good. All right, good stuff. But all yeah. right, so everyone, happy well, Valentine's Day. We appreciate on. you coming on. Yeah, thanks for being on, and um, we will see you. I guess uh, next entrepreneur meetup is um, what are we in May? I think so. Yeah. That, uh, get a little hiatus. Is it May or April? I think it's May, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we did it at the beginning of this quarter, and then I think we do it at the end of next quarter. It, MDM it's kind right of like after a weird that. gap. Yeah, we only got, we got a close. I think it's like three weeks to MDM after uh, the meetup, or only two weeks. Just stay there for two weeks. Go hang out with Sam. You better get used to flying. Yeah, come hang out with me. I got a spare room if Joe doesn't move in. So. There you go. <laughs> Hey, that could be come trouble. down to San Angelo. I'll teach you how to run a sex shop, and we'll open one up in your town. There we go. Um, yes, I'll, I'll be right there. On that note, I'm leaving. <laughs> you have a wonderful evening, guys. All right, you guys. Have a great night. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone.